It's a new day. You know what I'm saying? It's a new lesson. I'm Arvin Enriquez, your subject teacher for probability and statistics. Our topic for this video lesson is about understanding the normal curve distribution. Our lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to understand the concept of the normal curve distribution. State and illustrate the properties of a normal curve distribution. Sketch the graph of a normal curve distribution. And recognize the importance of the normal curve in statistical inference. Let's talk about now the properties of the normal probability distribution. The distribution curve is bell-shaped. As you can see in this graph, your distribution is bell-shaped. Next, the curve is symmetrical about its center. So this line here in your center is called your mirror line. Now, something is symmetrical when it is the same on both sides. A sheep has symmetry. Please do take note of this. A sheep has symmetry if a central dividing line or your mirror line can be drawn on it to show that both sides of the sheep are exactly the same. That's why your normal curve is symmetrical about its center. Your third properties, the mean, the median, and the mode coincide at the center. Meaning to say, dealing with your normal curve, there is only one value for your mean, median, and mode, which is equal to zero. Next, your fourth property, the width of the curve is determined by standard division because the value of your standard division, it tells us no, how spread our data will be or what, how big or how small the differences between our datas. Our fifth property, the tail of the curve flatten out indefinitely along horizontal axis. So that will be your x-axis. Always approaching the axis but never touching it. Meaning to say, at some point, your curve will be parallel to your horizontal axis. So there is no point of intersection between your curve and your horizontal axis. That is, the curve is asymptotic to the baseline or your horizontal axis. Again, why consider that your curve is asymptotic to the baseline or your horizontal axis? Because at some point, your curve or your normal curve will be parallel to your horizontal axis. Meaning to say, there is no point of intersection between your horizontal axis and your normal curve. The last property, the area under the curve is equal to 1. Thus, it represents the probability or proportion or the percentage associated with specific sets of measurement values. That's why before dealing with your probability distribution table, so you need to check if the total or sum of those probability under the table is equal to 1 or not. Because we cannot consider that your table is a probability distribution if the total or sum of those probability under the table is not equal to 1. That equal to 1 or sum of those probability will represent now the total area 
under your normal curve. That's why the area under the curve is equal to 1. So we cannot use your normal curve to present those probability or probabilities, I mean, uh, with your table if they are not equal to 1. So we can move forward in dealing with your normal curve if right after checking if those probability or the total or sum of those probability under the table is equal to 1. Let's deal now with the area under the normal curve. Our last property for the normal distribution that the area under this curve is equal to 1. But in reality, the area under this curve is equal to 0 0.9974. Approximately equal to 1, but in reality, not equal to 1. But we assume that the total area under this curve is equal to 1. But in reality, again, no, in reality, the total area under this curve is 0 0.9974. As you can see in this uh, graph, so your population mean will fall at the center. So meaning to say the value of your population mean, your mode, your median will be equal to 0. As you can see again in this figure, so there are only 60 scores allowed in every normal curve. So three negative C-scores and three positive C-scores. Three positive C-scores for the right side of your normal curve and three negative C-scores for the left side of your normal curve. Again, there are only six C-scores allowed in every normal curve. You cannot exceed from that number. So there is no such thing or reason for you to have 8 C-scores in, in a single normal curve. So there are 6 C-scores in every normal curve. That's the only number allowed in every normal curve. For our discussion points, the table of areas under the normal curve is also known as the C table. If you try to observe your C table, there are C, uh, C scores. And each C scores, there is a corresponding value of area that will be mapped to the area or areas under your normal curve. That's why the table of the areas under the normal curve is also known as the C table because in every C scores that you can see in your C table, there is a corresponding value of area under your normal curve. Now, the C score is the measure of relative standing. You need to take note of that. It is calculated by subtracting your mean or your mu from the measurement x, then dividing the result by s or your standard division. The final result, the c-score, represents the distance between a given measurement x and the mean expressed in standard deviations. For this slide, let's talk about your four-step process in finding the areas under the normal curve given a C value. So your first step is that you need to express the given C value into a three-digit form. For example, if the given value of your C uh, value is equal to 1, then you need to express this uh, C value to three-digit form. 
So that will be equal to 1.00. Your step number two, so using your C table, find the first two digits on the left column. So you need to take note of this. No. So find the first two digits on the left column. Then after finding the first two digits on the left column, you're going to match the third digit with the appropriate column on the right. So after dealing with your step 2 and 3, you're going to read the area or the probability at the intersection of the row and the column. This is the required area that will be mapped to your C scores. So here in step number four, as you can see, read the area or probability because your probability in your probability distribution table is the same value of area that you can find in your normal curve. Meaning to say, that's why your the total or the sum of those probabilities under the table must be equal to 1 because these probabilities will represent the total area under your normal curve. In every vertical strips under your normal curve, those vertical strips will represent an area or a probability that will be mapped in your probabilities under your probability distribution table. For example, number one, we're asked to find the area that corresponds to C, which is equal to 1. Our first step, so express the given into a three-digit form. That's why our C now is equal to 1.00. In your second step, in the table below, find the row Z is equal to 1.00. And right after dealing with your step number two, let's go now with your step number three. In the table, find the column with the heading point zero zero. And right after dealing with this step number three, you're going to read the area or the probability at the intersection of a row 1.0 and the column 0 0.00. .00. So as we can see here in your table, in your first column here, this will be your C scores that will be mapped to each value in here. No, in your first column, you can see a number, no, a number before and after your decimal point. So for example, if your C is equal to 1.00, so, you're going to consider this 1.00 since 0 will be your second decimal point or decimal places in your given value. That's why you need to, uh, to match this 1.0 to 0 0.00. So, whatever the point or the area of intersection between your 1.0 and 0 0.00 so that will be 0.3413. Now, that will be the area that will be mapped to your C, which is equal to 1.00. So for example, if we're asked to find the area that corresponds to C, which is equal to 1.11, then the area for this value of C is equal to 0.36. Five, because the, the area of intersection between your 1.1 and 0, by 0 0.01 is equal to 0 0.3665. Now, going back to your example number one, since your C is equal to 1.00, then 
the area of intersection between your 1.0 and 0 0.00 or the column and the row that will be mapped to, each, uh, to this 1.0 and 0 0.00 will be equal to 0.3413. So this 0.3413 will be the area that you are considering here in your normal curve. So the area between your 0 and 1.0 here will be equal to 0.3413. So that this will be the area, the shaded region here in your normal curve. That will be the area between your 0 and 1.00. So let's go now with your example number two. So find the area that corresponds to C is equal to negative 2.58. So your negative sign here will tell you that the value of your C will fall on the left side of your normal curve. But if we try to consider this area, no? this shaded region here from 0 to 2.58 positive 2.58 uh, here in the right side of your equation so whatever your area between your 0 to positive 2.58 is the same area that you can map from 0 to negative 2.58 your sign here will tell you that the C score or the given C score will fall at the left side of your normal curve. That's why it's negative because this will be your negative part and positive part. So from zero up to the last part, that will be a positive value of your C score. So from zero up to the last part, so that will be your negative value of your C scores. But again, whatever your area between your 0 and positive 2.58, the same area that you can get from 0 to negative 2.58. That's why the same process, so we're considering now your positive 2.58 as the value of your C, since the area between your 0 and your 2 between your 0 and positive 2.58 is the same area from your 0 to negative 2.58. Now, for the solution, so find the row C is equal to 2.5, then find the column with the heading 0 0.08, then read the area of the intersection of row 2.5 and column 0 0.08. Since the given now is in terms of three uh, numbers, that's why we move to your second uh, steps to the last step, which is your reading of the area or the probability based on the intersection of these uh, values. So since your C now is equal to 2.58 or positive 2.58, or we consider now your 2.58 as a value per C score, then whatever the area of point of intersection between your 2.5 here and your 0 0.08 here, that will be the area that will be mapped to your shaded region here. So that will be equal to 0 0.4951 is the area that will be mapped to your 2.5 if your C is 2.58. So meaning to say this 0.4951 is the area between your 0 and positive 2.58. A while ago, we said that the area between your 0 and positive 2.58 is the same area that we can get from 0 to negative 2.58. That's why our answer for this example number 2 and if we're asked again to find the area that corresponds to C, which is equal to negative 2.58, is the same value of area that we can get from 0 to positive 2.58. So if your C is positive 2.58, if your C is negative 2.58,
we are arriving on the same value of your area because 0 to 2.58 and 0 to 2. Point, negative 2.58 will provide you the same value of area between them. That's why we are considering the positive value of your C-score. Then the negative will tell you that your C-score will fall to the left or to the right side of your normal curve. So for activity 1, for this video lesson, so find the corresponding area between C is equal to 0 and each of the following. So there is a given value of C here. Then using your C table, you're going to find uh, the value between your C is equal to 0 and the given values of C here. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.